Alright, <coughs> ok. Um, selamat tengah hari dan selamat datang. Nama saya Ramesh daripada Stand for All Makerspace dan Meranti Makers Lab. So program kali ini dibawa khas kepada semua pelajar dan guru uh, oleh Meranti Makers Lab. Ok, sempena dengan Minggu Sains Negara. So I think you may have heard Minggu Sains Negara ada banyak program. Minggu Sains Negara di bawah Kementerian Sains, Teknologi dan Inovasi. So kali ini uh, untuk bulan Ogos, tema dia kejuruteraan, okay, engineering. So all the topics, all the webinars yang akan dibuat oleh Meranti dan rakan strategik bertemakan kejuruteraan. Okay, it's technology but focusing on engineering. Please note ya. Yeah? So Um, meranti ada beberapa program yang telah disediakan sepanjang bulan Disember, uh, uh, Ogos. So adik-adik, if you stay on, we will share the link nanti boleh nampak apa lagi program diteruskan untuk bulan Ogos. Okay. So let me introduce uh, tajuk untuk uh, hari ini. Tajuk hari ini ialah Augmented Reality Content Development. Okay, we, I think uh, you may have heard uh, ada program berhubung dengan 3D design, ada program untuk AR, VR, drone dan sebagainya. So this is on augmented reality. So pakar dia ialah Encik Arif Shah daripada syarikat Tesso. So Tesso is a technology based company yang fokus dia kepada um, uh, development of AR content. Okay augmented reality and also VR content digunakan untuk pendidikan and dal dalam bidang-bidang lain. So kalau ada ada nak tanya nanti boleh tanya Encik Arif apakah atau di manakah teknologi AR ni digunakan. Of course education memang kita tahu dia amat menarik menggunakan AR sebagai satu platform untuk membelajar. Okay, so let me introduce uh, apa yang akan berlaku untuk program hari ini. So, yang pertama Encik Arif akan menerangkan teknologi AR dan juga kegunaan and most importantly bagaimana adik-adik dan guru boleh menggunakan teknologi untuk menghasilkan kandungan. Okay, so there will be content development uh, demonstration macam mana nak buat. So that is the main purpose. So dalam satu jam, you'll be able to learn all this. Okay, so dalam tu Uh, kita pun ada sediakan hadiah okay, seperti yang telah dimaklumkan eh, dalam poster kita hadiah untuk hari ini is ber, uh, ber, uh, berasaskan quiz so if you pay attention uh, ada lima soalan yang akan ditanya dan sesiapa yang dapat semua lima betul dalam masa yang tersingkat akan mendapat hadiah hadiah tu dalam bentuk voucher bernilai RM50 untuk produk atau program yang diadakan di Stand for All Makers Space okay? atau di Meranti Makers Step. Dua-dua tempat ni memang akan menawarkan uh, program okay? yang bernilai RM50 program atau produk. So yang kelima-lima pemenang untuk hari ini, you akan terima uh, notis bahawa uh, adik telah memenangi hadiah dan apakah bentuk hadiah yang akan diberi. Right, so that is number one. Yang kedua, ada satu assignment yang ini lebih menarik. So lepas uh, uh, Cik Arif memberi penerangan, ada satu uh, challenge atau cabaran di mana adik-adik boleh menghasilkan satu konten uh, dengan menggunakan teknologi AR dan tema dia solar system um, uh, challenge. Okay, so pertandingan solar system. Details tu Encik Arif akan menerangkan. Okay, so that's overview and uh, I would like to thank you semua kerana sudi nak uh, membelajari sesuatu yang baru uh, sempena dengan Minggu Sains Negara. Okay, so dengan itu uh, saya akan uh, menjemput Encik Arif untuk memberi uh, penerangan tentang teknologi AR. To you Encik Arif. Okay, thank you. Terima kasih, Cik Ramesh. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, hope you all are having a good day. Selamat petang semua. Okay, so... Uh, 
Let me share my slides. So yeah, can you all see my slides? All right, so uh, today we are going to experience what augmented reality is all about. So in this presentation, we are going to start with a, I'll give you a small briefing on what AR really is. And by the end of the session, you will actually start to create your own content uh, using augmented reality. And along the way, as uh, Encik Ramesh shared, shared earlier, kita ada uh, a few quizzes that you can answer. So the one who answers all questions correctly and with the fastest time will win vouchers, okay? So before we begin, I need all of you to turn on your cameras. We are going to play a game right now. So don't be shy, I can just uh, put your cameras. And you may scan the QR code on your screen. You can use either your phone or your tablets. Okay, you can scan the... can scan the QR code, but just uh, don't start first yet. I will show you how the game works. So when you first uh, launch the game, you will see this purple icon over here, this purple notification. So you can just click on the skip button. And what will happen is that there'll be a red button uh, showing on your screen. So you have to click on the red button. And after that, you are actually given 60 minutes to complete the game, 60 seconds, sorry. So how the game works is that you need to move your phone around, you know, it's 360, so you have to move around the, your room and locate all the numbers. So you have to tap the numbers in order. You start from number one, two, three, four, and so on until number 10. Uh, the faster you are, and if you manage to tap on all buttons correctly, you will get the highest score. So we let's see who get the highest score this time. Okay, are you all ready? So you may scan the QR code and start the game. Yeah, guys, you can turn on your camera.
please do share your scores. Do we have anyone beating a thousand score? You can share your, so I, you're unmuted, so you can share your score to your chat box, or you can also use your mic and show your score also. Mm. Yeah. As you can see here, the numbers are floating. So when you end the game, you'll get something like this. It's called high score. Right. I got what you got 1000 so far. So yeah, that's our high score. Right, congrats, congrats. So I hope you all had fun playing the game. And before we move further to the uh, session today, uh, I just want to check, do you all have Adobe Arrow already installed? You can reply in the chat box below. So if you don't have it installed, please uh, do please do install it while I uh, go on with my session. Maybe uh, I mean I can help share the link in the uh, chat box. There's also an Adobe Arrow app that you can use that you can download, but it's only available for iOS. So allow uh, pakai iOS boleh download the uh, app dia juga. Okay, so uh, I want to ask all of you, based on the game you played earlier, maybe you have heard of this AR before. Who can tell me what augmented reality is? Apa itu uh, AR? Unreal thing in a world, yeah? True, correct. Anyone else? Technology that uses real world interaction through camera. Yeah, that is true. So augmented reality, when you, when you talk about AR, it's really simple actually. All it is is actually a technology that overlays digital information onto the real world. So similar to the game earlier, you could see the numbers floating around. Yeah, Nombor tu, dia terbang ke bilik kita kan. So what it does is that it's actually overlaying something that is virtual into the real world. And you might have heard of virtual reality before, VR. So VR is something different. It's like a totally immersive uh, thing where you normally uh, wear glasses, VR glasses. So AR, augmented reality, is 50-50. So it's like 50% digital and 50% real. Okay, so augmented reality is, it has been around for quite some time, but only recently that uh, we see it. We see it being used in a uh, a lot of industries such as retail, education, advertising. 
digital tourism, navigation, gaming, and real estate as well. Okay, so uh, as Inchet Ramesh mentioned earlier, kita ada quiz eh. So I'll go through a bit of a, some more briefing about the quiz uh, that we'll have along the presentation. So total kita ada lima, uh, so lima quiz and setiap set uh, ada dua, dua atau tiga soalan. So make sure to include your full name ah, letak nama penuh, otherwise we don't know who you are. And the winner will be determined based on the speed and the number of questions asked or answered correctly. And uh, so yeah, you have to answer everything correctly and be the fastest to answer. So there will be prizes also, which is uh, around 50 ringgit worth of cash vouchers. So this voucher you can actually use to buy or you can use it for any program or products uh, from Stanford Alm in space. Okay, so are we ready for quiz number one? Okay, so quiz number one, you can go ahead and scan the QR code here. As a reminder, please use your full name, letak nama penuh siapa jawab paling laju, dia menang uh, you will be given uh, there's three questions here, so I think I'll give you uh, it's around three minutes to answer it Okay, so I think most of you have answered. So yeah, most of you got it correct. AR stands for Augmented Reality. Okay. So it's not a completely immersive virtual environment since you're actually using 50% virtual, 50% real. And smartphone tablets. Yeah, so most of you have it. Uh, answered correctly and I just want to remind you guys uh, kalau ada apa-apa soalan boleh je type dalam chat box uh, kami akan uh, assist you lah Tolong. so we will announce the winner at the end of the presentation today eh? at the end of the session today all the five winners will be announced Okay, all right, so first of all, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, AR, we can use it in many, many different uh, industries uh, or use cases. 
So I think the most popular now uh, AR augmented reality is actually being used in education and training. So yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah you might have been a uh, you know that sometimes can reading a book can be a little bit boring because well it's all like text and images they are static right but with ar with this technology you can actually bring the images to life um, by using animations and such in fact uh, there is a study conducted that says student retention increased by 70 percent when we are using ar so i'm just going to show you a, a short video here so as you can see, the guy is scanning their book in the phone. And as it detects the astronaut, it spawns in the 3D model. So you can do all sort of thing, animation, enlarge the image and whatnot. So not just uh, books, but you can also create interactive education game such as you can see here the person is holding a card so when you put a certain card it automatically detects that it's certain so it you know it loads in the certain 3d model uranus and the sun even so as you can see when he puts in the mercury it automatically now Mercury is orbiting around the sun. So when you put in Venus, you have Venus also orbiting the sun. So with AR, you can actually create, you know, very, very uh, interesting uh, animations that, you know, you can use actually, use it for education. This is especially true, I think, when it comes to kids, right? When small kids are naturally drawn to something that is moving. So when they see these, usually quite hard to retain your kids' uh, attention to something, but having it something interesting as this, I think it can make them learn a lot better. So yeah, any questions? You can just, uh, if you're not clear about anything, you can just uh, use a chat box. Okay, other than education, AR is also being used in healthcare. So as you can see here for emergency situation, maybe someone might panic and not know exactly what to do. So with AR, as you can see in the top left here, it can provide a guided method for someone to conduct say CPR, for example. So it shows you exactly where to place the pads. And you can detect if you are actually placing it correctly or not. Huh? Dia tahu mana uh, kita letak pad tu. So kalau CPR is required, dia akan bagi tahu kita CPR required, place the hands. Dia boleh tahu juga kalau compression kita kuat atau uh, tak cukup kuat. And yeah, your defibrillator sometimes will give shock, so it'll give you a warning to keep clear. And now the paramedic has arrived. They tahu kat mana exactly a patient kita berada by using GPS. So he's also wearing an AR glass. So it can, as you can see, it can be very, very useful in cases of emergency where it can give us a sort of like guidance. Uh, because sometimes when you panic, you might not, you might start like, forgetting things. And so with these AR glasses, it can actually you know, prevent something serious, uh, prevent an emergency from going even more serious. So other than that, similarly, you can also use AR for, I've seen uh, people using it for surgical visual, visualization. So normally it's used for a uh, education in surgery where you can detect organs and you know, overly information on the organs as well. Okay. So it is now time for our second quiz. You may scan the code. You may scan the code and answer the question. You will be given two minutes to answer the question.
Please put in your full name also. Huh? Okay, how can augmented reality enhance the learning experience? It's true, we can provide interactive 3D models and simulation to make our experience more interesting. Which of the following is not a potential benefit of using AR in education? Yes, we still need qualified teachers because AR is only a tool. We still need someone to uh, teach and, well, uh, it's still needed. Okay, let's continue with our session. All right, so uh, AR, aside from education and healthcare, it's also, I've been seeing uh, increased use in gaming. So uh, who can tell me what game is this here in the top left here? It's quite, quite popular. Yes, uh, Pokemon Go. So yeah, Pokemon Go is actually uh, one of the first, I think one of the first few games that popularized AR. And below here, we also have something called Minecraft Home. Uh, so Minecraft Home, I, I think it's not available anymore, but it used to be that you can actually, uh, you can actually like, place these virtual trees and houses on top of your actual houses. So uh, as you can see, the uh, gaming in AR can give you a more immersive gameplay compared to a normal phone game, for example, because it enables real-world interaction between the uh, user, what you see on the screen, and the real world itself, OK? So other in ga than gaming, it's, uh, so I've seen this recently. Uh, this glass is actually made by Walt Disney. So it's an AR glass. As you can see, the person is taking a picture. It's something like a photo booth. And yeah, so this group there is not actually real, it's on the screen. So you can like take a picture with your favorite characters. And yeah, this thing I, I believe would be very, you could use it like for marketing and also, you know, to, to make people uh, have fun, right? You can actually, uh, there's no like limits to uh, augmented reality, right? Okay, uh, please do scan for the quiz, the third quiz. Let me give two minutes to answer the quiz.
Okay, let's look at your answers. Which popular mobile game brought AR to the mainstream by allowing play to catch virtual creatures? Yes, that's right, Pokemon Go. How does augmented reality enhance gaming experience? So it's by integrating virtual elements into the real world element. So it's not actually uh, creating entirely virtual world because you're actually using half virtual with half real world. Okay. We can also use a customer experience. So for example, uh, this is a navigation app. Sometimes you may get lost, like, you know, you go into a mall, you're not familiar with it, you might get lost. Uh, but using AR, you can actually give you a guided pathway to your destination. And can also provide marketing. To provide guided tours to the user. The example, you can actually show what is what is being shown right now. You can use navigation basically in a lot of the different industries we hear of And you can also give the data for your customers. For example, how many visitors uh and take a start this month, or even ratings. Yeah, so not just uh, education and gaming, but so this navigation in AR is actually uh, quite a new concept, but we believe that it could uh, help users a lot better since Normally, when you are in a mall, you wouldn't be able to use regular navigation tool like Google Maps. Wouldn't would normally not work in uh, in, inside a closed building. But with AR, you can actually provide the same guided pathway, but more suited for indoor uh, navigation. Sorry. Do we have uh, any question? So if there's no further question, then we can move ahead to our spot, please. Please do scan the code. Uh, please do use your full name, uh, otherwise we won't be able to identify you. Let's look at your answers.
how can augmented reality improve navigation experience? Okay, so yes, it can overlay interesting info about places. It can show historical landmarks for uh, cultural enrichment. It can also provide real-time walking direction. So as we saw in the video earlier, uh, very helpful when you want to uh, walk uh, to somewhere that you're not familiar with. Number four, this, the last one is not true, however, it doesn't offer you teleportation options, however, not yet at the moment. So what benefits can business gain by incorporating AR? Yes, it can enhance user engagement and brand loyalty. Okay, so uh, so we have seen uh, how AR can be utilized in many different industries. And now we are going to see how do we create AR content in the first place. Macam mana kita uh, buat AR punya application, yeah? So normally, uh, AR, we will do uh, some of the more popular AR application or software, uh, development software. It's called uh, Unreal Engine 5 as well as Unity. So these are actually a uh, more intermediate advanced uh, punya level lah. So they typically use something known as AR Core and AR Kit as the development framework. So AR Core is developed by Google and typically kita pakai ni untuk Google uh, untuk Android punya application lah. So kalau iOS kita akan pakai AR Kit, AR Kit is developed by Apple. However, for today, kita akan pakai application yang much much more simple, which is called uh, Adobe Aero. This is uh, very, very suitable for beginner. There is, uh, you don't need to code in anything. It's all drag and drop. Okay, time for our last quiz. This question, please do scan the code. You can also use the link in the chat box. It's fine. Okay, let's look at your answers. Which of the following industry had extensively adopted AR? Okay, so AR, uh, as we said, is being used uh, in a lot of industries, including education, navigation, and gaming. Mining, however, has not really used uh, AR as of uh, now. Which of the following software is used for AR content creation? So Unity, uh, Unreal, and Adobe Arrow. 
So we, have, we will be using the Adobe Arrow software today. Adobe Lightroom, however, is not a software that you use for, uh, for AR content creation. It's only these other three. Which famous tech company introduced the AR kit? Yeah, it's true, it's Apple. Apple made the AR kit, whereas Google made the AR core. But typically, they are, they are quite similar, but used for one is used for Android, and another one is used for iOS. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, so uh, what you will be learning today is how to create an you know, AR solar system. So by the end of today, you should be able to do uh, something similar to this, where you can see planets orbiting around the sun, okay? Okay, so uh, so you guys can go ahead and launch the Adobe Aero software. So someone said in the chat that actually mining does use AR. So yeah, actually you are right, to be honest. Yeah, it's still a fairly new thing and mining, they yeah, have been used in, I mean, augmented reality has been, recently has been used in mining also. It's true. Okay, so uh, if you guys have any problem launching the application, do let us know in the chat box below. We can assist you. I will, so when you launch the Adobe Aero application, what you want to do is click on new file. And then you can call, uh, you can name it uh, anything you want, maybe space or solar system. So uh, by default, you will have this blank space over here, all right? And you have, so it's not a paid application actually, it's a, it's totally free to download this Adobe Aero. So if not downloaded, you can actually, uh, uh, I will uh, post the link here. So it's totally free, but however, it's not available on Android yet. Uh, so it's only, uh, not in Malaysia. So, but you can actually use your desktop, your Windows or uh, iOS. Okay, so have you all launched the application? Uh, Mr. Reef. Mr. Reef. Okay, uh, someone asked how to install. Okay, never mind. I, I'll open up the link here. It will be arrow. So 
So you can click on the try the desktop beta. And it will actually guide, it will download and install it for you. So anyone still have problem installing it? So I believe everyone else is okay. Yeah? Okay, so when you launch the application and create a new file, you'll be given a blank empty space like this. And over here at this side, you have your navigation tools. So by default, it's on the select tool. Your second tool here, it's on the left corner over here. You have the move tool. So the move tool, you can uh, move it around. You can move objects around for example say if i want if i do want to add in a shape uh, i can click on the abstract shape here for example i can put in the cone i can just like tap on the cone and it will load in the cone so by using the move tool i can just drag it along the arrow so, so you can see here there's three arrows the red arrow is the x axis the blue arrow for the z axis and the green arrow for the y axis okay other than that you also have over here on your right you can also set the position here by typing the uh, values so for example if i would want to center it center my cone here uh, at this exact center of my screen, what I can do is put in zero, zero, and zero. And now it's at the center. Okay. So other than that, other than the move tool, you also have the, uh, if you go with your left bar here, you have the rotate tool. So the shortcut for the rotate tool is R. And with the rotate tool, you can uh, rotate your objects. So similarly, you have three arrows here, the red, uh, green, and blue, or the three axes, OK? And the third tool we have is the scale tool. The scale tool shortcut is the S key. And you can drag it around. So by default, you notice that even though I'm only scaling it on the y-axis, I'm dragging along on the y-axis, but it is being scaled. Then is, if you go to your bottom right over here, you can see there's a lock. It's a lock icon beside your scale. So when you have this lock icon, it means that your x, y, and z axis will all be the same. So if I tap on this, now it's unlocked. So what I can do is that I can just stretch it in the x-axis and it only stretch in one direction. Okay, so all good so far? So more okay? If you have any question, just let me know in the chat box.
Okay, other than that, you also have the orbit tool. The shortcut for the orbit tool is number one. And what the orbit tool is, is actually you're orbiting your entire scene. Okay. Uh, if you go below the orbit tool, there is the pan tool. The pan tool shortcut is the number two key. You can move your scene left and right, top and bottom, by dragging your mouse key. And the third tool is the dolly tool. The dolly tool is over here on the left. When you click on the dolly tool and drag your mouse in and out, you have a left mouse button, it will zoom in on your object. Or the other shortcut, you can also use your scroll on your mouse to zoom in and out. Okay. Can you all follow along? Okay, so now we are going to try to do our solar system. So what we can do is just to delete our clone right here. And I forgot to mention earlier, but uh, so uh, please do follow along this uh, demonstration because at the end of this section, we actually have a competition, a challenge. So who can create the best uh, you know, space system, solar system, the most creative one will win a prize. And I will announce the details uh, at the end of the session. So you'll be basically you'll be given a week after this session to create your own uh, AR content. But please do follow along for this session first. So you'll get a general idea on how to create your own content. You can also follow me along uh, while I'm uh, demonstrating the uh, application. Okay, so uh, if you look at your site here, your Adobe Aero has already given us, uh, there's a lot of, kita ada banyak starter asset. Eh? So we have abstract objects with animation, characters even, but what I'm looking for is the second last one here, the space exploration pack. So you can click on it. And I want to bring in my sun first. So to bring in my sun, I can just tap on the sun. And it's a bit big, so zoom out with the dolly tool. The shortcut for the dolly tool is the number three key. Okay, as you can see here, what if I want the sun to be centered uh, on the ground? As you can see here, it's on top of the ground right now, right? So what I can do is that on the bottom left here, under the properties panel, I can change the pivot. By default, it is in bottom. I can change it from bottom to center. And now when I click the position, I put it at zero, y to zero and z to zero it will perfectly centered on my ground okay so to view your scene you can actually head to the top bar here you have the home button here the edit button and the preview button so when you click on the preview, it's going to show you a uh, full screen of your current scene. But of course, it doesn't look very interesting right now because it's only a static sun. So how can we make it move? How can we rotate it? So uh, when you click on the select tool and have your sun selected, you can see on your bottom left here, there is a stickman walking running icon. 
called the behavior builder. And when I click on this icon on my bottom left, I will load this trigger setting, triggers and action to make your scene interactive. So basically, I can make anything, uh, I can animate anything in my scene. So do you all find the icon? Can you all follow along? Any issue so far? Nope. Okay. So to animate my son, I have the trigger button over here. You can see the blue trigger button here. So when I click on the trigger, it gives me four different options. Start, tap, and then exit. So what it does is that it's asking you when should the animation start. If I want the applic if I want the animation to trigger right when I launch the application, I can actually click on the start. Tapping means that the animation will only trigger when I tap on the object. And proximity, enter, and exit is depends on your device. So, for example, if I bring my device closer to the object within a certain radius, and then it will trigger the animation. So, for now, we are going for the first option here. So, you can click on Start. And you can see here, we have an action button, plus action. So click on the plus action, and you have a lot of different options here. But what I want is the fourth option here. You can see the spin option. So just click on spin. And you can see you have a new details panel over here where you can control how your sun spins. So make sure your subject is selected as sun. And it asks, where do I want to spin the sun? So normally, this, uh, you can see here, the green axis is the y axis. So if I do set it to y, it will spin clockwise or counterclockwise along the y axis. If you move down all the way to easing, there's an easing option. So what easing does is that ease in and out does is that it will slowly uh, accelerate and also decelerate your rotation. But we don't want that, right? Because the sun, you can expect it to move uh, pretty much at a constant speed. So I can switch my easing to linear, OK? linear and i also want it to spin infinitely so i select on infinite and now to view my sun spinning again i can at the top here you have the preview button so just click on the preview and you should be able to see your sun spinning Okay, so all good so far? Ada apa-apa masalah? If something is not clear, just let me know. It will help you guys. Okay, so if you can see the some of the options we have here, we also have the duration option. So I'm going to try and increase the duration from 2 to 4. And what happens is that when I go back to preview, it starts to spin slower. Okay. So what it really does is that when you have your infinite option selected, all the duration does is that it can speed up your animation or slow down your animation. So if I make this number larger, it will be slower. If I want to make it spin faster, I need to use a really small amount. For example, if I put like 0 0.5 seconds, what is that? Yeah, it'll spin really, really fast, right?
So I'll just set it back to two seconds. You can also use the reverse direction option here. There's a toggle here. When you reverse the direction, it will spin the other way around, the anti-clockwise direction. OK. So what if I want to bring other objects into uh, my solar system? So I can try, for example, in the starter asset, similarly in the space exploration pack, I can look, for example, uh, Earth. Let's type on Earth. And I can you know, arrange it the position. So maybe X to be 0. And I want to maintain my pivot to center. My position to x to be 0, y to be 0. And I can just drag it to the side here. So to scale it, again, the option for the scaling tool, you can either uh, click on the scale tool on your left or click the S button. And I can scale it. So I would want to lock the scale so that it's uniformly scaled. Hi, uh, I added the earth on the on the screen, but uh, and I we also it. want the uh, the earth to spin, right? So what we can do over here is so under the sun spin here, you also have the uh, the plus icon down here. So I can click on the plus icon. Similarly, click on spin. Make sure that the subject is Earth around here. Axis is Y. And in the easing option, I do want it to be linear also. And similarly, I do want it to be infinite. So someone has had a question. May you repeat your question, please? Uh, I added the, uh, uh, the earth on the screen, but I couldn't see it on my okay. screen. Is there only sun? There is only sun. So maybe it might. Do you see it over here on your right? Is there sun and earth? Does it, does it list down the earth there? Uh, yes, list down the earth too. Okay. All right. So when you click on the earth, I'm guessing it's actually, it might be like hidden inside your sun. So what you can oh, do is okay, that okay. you click earth, yeah, and click on the move tool and move it outside. All right. Okay. I will try. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now when I preview it, I can down, okay? Okay, but normally when you have our, our planet, the instead of just spinning, they also orbit around the sun, yeah, the pushing equal, uh, the orbit direction. So what I can do is that if I, I click on the Earth first, and in the bottom here, I so normally what I will do is I will group similar animations together. For example, what I did earlier was spin and spin, so I grouped them earlier. 
but this is a different animation right i want to orbit around the sun so i can click on another trigger plus trigger down here your bottom left when i click on plus trigger start click on start and then i can use action plus action and so one of the it's one of the uh, the fourth bottom fourth for option from bottom which is the orbit option so with the orbit option you want to maintain your subject as the earth and then you can choose your center point so your center point in this case would be the sun click on the sun for the easing i want to make it linear And the direction I can maintain it as clockwise. But I do want to make it to orbit infinitely around the sun. So I click on infinite. And when I preview, I can see now the earth is spinning. And at the same time, it's orbiting around the sun, right? All good so far? Can you repeat? Sorry. For the orbit, is it? Yes, the subject and also center. Okay, so. Uh, okay, I do want to start back. Huh? When I click on Earth, I press on trigger, start, and then I can select the plus action over here. Plus action to be orbit. Okay, so you have your details panel on your right here. So you want the rotating object to be your subject, which is Earth, subject Earth. And then you have your drop down for your center also here. So you want to click on the sun because your Earth orbits around the sun, right? And then for the easing, I want to make it linear. Unless if you do want it to like accelerate and decelerate, then you can put ease in and out. So you can actually try that. Let me show you. And you select on infinite. So you can see it slows down and speed up. But if you don't want that effect, I can just select the easing to be linear. So linear means it will be in constant speed. Like this. So okay. Okay. All right. So uh, I will go ahead now and start filling more planets and you guys can follow along as well, okay? All right, so what is the planet closest to the sun? Who can answer? Venus. Venus close, but um, it's actually the Venus is the second planet. It's a uh, Mercury. So Mercury okay. first, and Venus, yeah. So I can, whenever you bring in an object, you can like freely move it around and try to arrange it. Or I can just use the position over here. Normally, I would want to set the x to 0 and the y to be 0. And by doing that, I can actually align all my planet, planet and the sun together, right? And the scale also, I can just make it smaller over here. 
can be 0 0.5. So we have Mercury, and I'm also just going to put uh, as Venus, yeah, Venus. Similarly, X and Y to zero, and make the scale a bit smaller. Okay, now I do want all my planet similar to Earth. I do want them to spin. I do want them to orbit around the sun also. So similarly, I can do for the spinning animation, I click on the small plus icon below the Earth spin here. And click on spin. Make sure that it's Mercury. Make it to linear and infinite. So if you want to make it spin faster, I can make the duration slightly lower. So by default, it's two seconds. What it means by two seconds, if I'm not mistaken, is two seconds per rotation. Maybe I can make it to like uh, 1.5. And it spins around. Hi. Uh, how can I delete the action that uh we mistake there? Okay. Uh, you can try either the uh delete key or the backspace key by highlight, select it first, and then use either backspace or delete. Okay. Thank you. Mercury and uh, Venus also. I want to add in a spin. Linear and infinite. Okay. Now we have everything spinning around. And to make it orbit, I can use my second trigger over here. Underneath the orbit sun, uh, select on the Mercury first, and then click on the plus icon below the orbit sun. And click on orbit. I want it to center around the sun. Maybe make it uh, because, well, uh, Mercury is nearer to the sun might be a bit faster right compared to the earth so i'll make the duration two seconds maybe using to be linear and infinite and then similarly to venus click on the plus icon orbit choose the center as the sun change the duration using to be linear, infinite. So now all your planets should be rotating around the sun. And it will spin on its own axis as well. All good? So I'll give you some time first to uh, you can put in as many planets as you want and have it spin around and orbit the sun. Okay.
Okay, to make the planet orbit around the sun. For example, I delete back my Mercury. So click on Mercury, for example. And then at the bottom here, you should be able to click on a plus button. If you don't have this orbit sun around, yeah, you can also make a new trigger, which is this plus trigger over here, the bottom left. Click on the plus trigger, start, and click on plus action. You should be able to get an orbit option here, which is the fourth on the bottom. So click on orbit. Okay, now you can see here Mercury orbit, right? So a subject, you want to make it as Mercury, maintain it. The center, you have to choose your center point. So in this case, the sun is my center. So I will choose the sun. Duration, uh, if you want to make it spin faster, make the duration lower. If you want to make the Mercury orbit uh, slower, increase the duration. So this is the duration it takes to complete one uh, rotation orbit. The easing, you can leave it to linear direction, uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. And then the only other option you want to tick is the infinite option. Okay. So when you go to preview, it should be orbiting around the sun. All right. So I'll give you five minutes to uh, add in the remaining planets. If you have any questions, just ask. Uh, um, yeah, okay, I'll give you 10 minutes, I think. Okay, so I guess you don't have to complete the entire solar system. Uh, so I'll just show you what else you can do uh, with the, our current solar system here. Okay, for example, if we want to create a text, uh, if I want to write sun above here, unfortunately, Adobe Arrow doesn't support uh, the regular text box. There are two options that we can use in Adobe Arrow. So the first one, is okay if you can look at the left over here there is letters and symbol letters and symbol and you have like one by one a b c d e f so actually this way is quite hard if you want to bring in one by one letters right so there's a simpler method what you can do is uh, just to go into your, maybe your Word, your Microsoft Word or any other uh, text application you have. And I can just actually just write in sun over here. 
uh, to make it look better, maybe I can put a text box. And then you know, type in sun. Um, okay, T version is still not moving. Is it the, the planets are not moving? Is it so? Does it spin? Look, does it spin? Okay, so it doesn't spin and doesn't uh, orbit the sun. Um, maybe you can share your screen to me. So I will you can share your screen to me so I can have a look. Okay, so you can click on the the uh, Earth orbit the Sun, the button over there. Um, okay, move lower a bit. Okay, so uh, click on Preview at the top, the top bar over there. You have the Edit beside your edit button so in your top left you have the home button right yeah so there's a preview button there and yeah so you have to go to your preview button to actually see it animating okay okay so if I do want to add in a text, I can use something like a word here. And what I can do is that if you right click on your dialog or, or your text box, you can actually find this option here, save as picture. Click on save as picture. And then for example, I can just call it sun text. Uh, you can also take a screenshot of your text box. Should be the same. So when you want to import something, uh, your own pictures or media, underneath the home button here, you have the plus, the small plus icon here on your top left. You can click on the import button and then find your image. So for example, I, I had my sun text here. It's a little bit small, so you have to like scale it up. I do want to move it to be somewhere around the sun. So I know my sun is at zero zero position, so I can select my text box here. The position zero. Z to be zero also, but Y I can drag it on top a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, but it's not really showing here. Let me just try another one. So the shortcut for taking a screenshot is Windows Shift and S. Windows Shift S and you get this clipping tool. So you can just like click on it and take a screenshot. And I want to save it as a picture. So I can click on save here. Yeah, uh, in case you didn't catch it, you can just press on the plus icon below the home button to import anything. You can import images even if you have uh, 3D models that you own. You can also import them together uh, in the software. So when I bring in the image, you normally would want to like, scale it up to however large you want it to be. And then... set its position to be above that. So when I go to preview, now you can see that when I move my direction, it actually doesn't like follow. It becomes inverted, right, the sun. So you don't actually want this. You want the sun to be always visible to the viewer, right? So the viewer can read it. So what you can do is that you tap on the sun image the sun text image and I want to create another trigger. So trigger plus trigger. And hit on start. Press on action. And I want to use the aim option. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The six option here. Aim option. Click on aim. Let's see the sun text here. The subject is whatever you call your image. Now aim target, what I want you to aim is the camera. So I want my sun text to always face the camera, right? So click on camera. And select infinite at the bottom here. Okay. So now when I click on preview, my sun is facing me. No matter which direction I move my camera, the sun text it always face against the camera. You can also turn on the billboard option. Uh, it will change the angle slightly. So any questions so far? Okay, so someone asked, how can we export? Okay, so uh, yeah, finally, I will show you the last step. When you're done with everything, you can click on the share option, the blue button here at the top right. Click on share. You should get this pop up over here. You can change your title and the author if you want. And then click on create link, the blue button there, create link. Just give it, uh, I think it will take a few seconds to generate the link.
Okay, so uh, it will generate both a link and a QR code. So you can download this QR code to your PC if you want. But uh, at the moment, as of today, uh, Adopt Aero only supports iOS at the moment for mobile devices, right? But so Android is they are still uh, updating it. Okay, so uh, all good. Any other question? Hi, can you repeat the link and also how to produce the QR code? Okay, uh, when you're done with everything, you can see the share share button here on the top. The top right, right? So just click on share. It will show you, it will pop up a menu. It should be another button to create link. Okay. Okay, so you just have to wait for a few seconds for it to generate the link and the QR code. Okay, so someone asked how to deploy it. You can actually just scan it. Uh, sorry, you, ha you have to download, uh, if I'm not mistaken, download the uh, Adopt Aero application on your iOS device first. And then you can just use your regular camera to scan the QR code. It should load up your scene. And you can share the QR code to anyone. It's uh, it's all loaded in cloud, the scene. So the application itself, it auto save your work. So when you download Adobe Arrow, it automatically automatically installs Adopt Creative Cloud. So I can actually, if I go to my files over here, there's a files button tab at the top. You can see all my, all your files. Yep. Okay, so if there's no further question, I will share the uh, information about the competition. Okay, we have 
come to the end of our session. Now we are going to announce the winners for the quizzes first. Eh? While Jay Arif um, and his team are tabulating, we've already got uh, five winners, some others. So we will announce the five winners for the quiz today. And also we will share the link for the competition. Right. I have also shared the link for the uh, what you call to receive the certificate. So students uh, who have not sent your information earlier, you can still send the information. So the Google form, you have to fill in your full name and the name of school. The certificate will be printed according to what you have given. Eh? Right. So please, uh, those who have not signed the Google form, please submit your Google form. We will generate the certificate uh, as soon as possible. Okay? Right. And for teachers who have joined us, I see teacher Tilaga. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. I hope this is a useful session. Then we can conduct this for more students. I believe uh, many students are still doing their exams this week, so they are not able to join us. Yeah. What we will do is we will share the Google link or the YouTube link and then they can watch and they can still participate in the competition i think jay arif has given a very nice explanation as to how you can use this uh, tool or this software to create your own animation uh, uh, i mean uh, augmented reality animation right so we'll announce a, a little bit about the competition and uh, next week we'll have the second session. So by the Namblas Haribulan August, Sasi and Kadua, Augmented Reality. And at that time, we will also announce the winners. Right? So I'll pass back to Che Arif if he has got the winners. Thank you. Okay, so uh will we share the winners for all the quizzes? So there's five quizzes. Each quiz will have uh one winner, and the winner will uh, get the price, which is an uh, around 50 ringgit voucher uh, that can be used for Maker's Lab, uh, stand for all products and programs. Okay. Okay, so the first winner is Nurul Mazlan, winner number one. So, congratulations, Nurul Mazlan. Uh, for quiz number two is Tila Gavati Arijanan. Congratulations. Quiz number three is Al Al. Congrats to you. Winner number four is Navindran Tayalan. And quiz number five is Muhammad Hafiz Ismail. So, congratulations to all winners. We will be sending out the details for the, uh, uh, the vouchers to you uh, after this. Okay. Uh, The winners, can you please um, type in your contact numbers or email addresses so that you know it'll be easier for us to contact you? Yeah, or your email address will be fine enough. Okay, so uh, we also have another competition as mentioned by Inche Ramesh. Uh, regarding the AR content creation. So I'll share with you the uh, poster. Okay, so to take part in the challenge, all you have to do is uh, uh, scan the QR code to submit your creation. So what we are looking for in this creation is that we are looking for your creativity to expand upon what we learned earlier, right? On the solar system. Um, you can yeah, make it however interesting you want, you know, add in astronauts and whatnot. Totally up to your creativity. You can add in your own images, you can export, uh, in, import your own images and 3D models as well. And when you are done with the uh, project, when you are done with the challenge, you can uh, as I showed earlier in your Adobe arrow, click on the share button. There'll be a button here to show you to create a link. And then you need to just copy and paste this link to the uh, submission form. 
So you can see the, the submission form here. Uh, we'll ask you a few questions and put in the link to your project over here. Okay. So you will be given one week to complete the challenge. We have plenty of time for you to uh, use your creativity. And the submission date is on, uh, the deadline is on 16th of August, 2023. The, we would have three winners for this competition. Uh, the number one grand prize will be a 300 ringgit cash. Second prize will be 200 ringgit. And the third prize will be 100 ringgit. So yeah, do your best for the challenge. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, do we have any other question before we end the session? If you want us to clarify about the competition or if you want to know more about AR, just uh, let us know. Okay, so let's wrap up. As a conclusion, we have seen that AR can be used in many, many different industries, you know, education, gaming, healthcare, and whatnot. So uh, AR augmented reality has really helped us to uh, view things in a more interesting way, right? In many, many different industries. So uh, AR is still, there's still many ways to go. Uh, it's still continuously being developed, the application. So yeah, stay tuned for you know more advancement in technology, okay? So uh, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, we will share with you the our uh, contact info as well in the uh, chat box later. So yeah, then feel free to connect us, you know, email us or you know, message us in our LinkedIn if you have any further question. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank all of you, you know, for attending the session. Uh, appreciate it. So. Uh, we will see you guys in the next training session on the 16th of August, right? 16th. 16th of August, okay. Our second session where we'll go deeper into uh, AR content creation. And yeah, so thank you all for attending. And with that, uh, I'd like to bid goodbye to all of you. <laughs>